Hey, God bless you. Welcome back to my channel. I'm excited for today's video. I know that God is going to speak to your life. The theme of today's video is this, what God will do when you repent and sin again. I'm going to give you three scriptures. This video is not going to be my opinion at all. So make sure you pay attention. Watch this video the whole way through. What's the theme? What God will do when you repent and sin again. So I want to open up this video by saying this, this video is not me speaking to hypocrites at all, because let me tell you something about hypocrites. Hypocrites don't want to change. Hypocrites don't want to be different. Hypocrites really don't care about the word of God. They just care about acting fake and living the way that they're living. They don't care about honoring the Lord. So in this video, as you're listening to this video, don't think that I'm talking to hypocrites at all. Don't think that I'm enabling sin. I'm not doing any of those things because a hypocrite will not even care about being right in the eyes of God. This video, what God would do when you repent and sin again, is dedicated and is aimed towards people who are really dealing with this situation, with this struggle, with this big question. Because there's a lot of people who ask this question all the time, and there's a lot of people who the devil is condemning and who the devil is weighing down with guilt, and they're feeling, what is God going to do to me? I repented of my sin, but I did the same sin again. What is God going to do? This video is for you. And like I said, I'm going to give you three scriptures. This video is not my opinion. This video is based on the word of God, just like all my other videos. So let me say that one more time. This video is not to help hypocrites. This video is not to pat hypocrites on the back. This video is for all those people who are dealing with this real issue, with this real struggle. So the theme is what God would do when you repent and sin again. I want to read you something in the book of Colossians. Look what the Bible says. Colossians chapter 1, verse 17 through 23. Look what the Bible says about Jesus and about us. Let's read. And he is before all things. That's talking about us. That's talking about the earth. And he is before all things. And in him, in Jesus, and in him, all things hold together. So who's the one holding you together? Jesus. Jesus is the one holding all things together. Who is the one that's holding your salvation together? Jesus. Let's keep reading. And he is the head of the body, the head of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him are the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. The Bible says in him was the fullness of God pleased to dwell. So what is it doing? It's magnifying Jesus. It's letting you know that Jesus is the glue that holds us together. It's letting you know that Jesus is the one that resurrected from the grave. It's letting you know that Jesus was the one who the spirit of God was dwelling in. Let's keep reading. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. So look what the Bible is saying. Why do you have peace with you and God? Because of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. Who is the one that reconciled you back to God? Jesus Christ. Who is the one that's holding you together? Who is the one that's holding you in salvation? Jesus Christ. Let's keep reading. And you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you, let me read that one more time, in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. So who is the one that's going to present you holy, blameless, above reproach? Because that's what repenting and then sinning against is, right? You feel that you're in reproach. You feel sinful. You feel dirty. You feel separated from God. But the Bible says that we once were alienated from the Lord. When is that once that we were alienated from the Lord? Talking about before Jesus Christ saved you. Before Jesus Christ saved you, you were alienated from God. But because of Jesus, you've been reconciled. And because of Jesus, he is presenting you blameless, above reproach. He is the one holding you together. The Bible says you once were lost in your wicked deeds, but not anymore in Jesus. But you might say, okay, okay, okay. But I repented and I sinned again and I keep falling in sin and I don't want to keep falling in sin. What about that? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Look what the Bible says about that. If indeed, talking about holding you above reproach, talking about the reconciliation. If indeed you continue in faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven and of which I, Paul, 
became a minister. So the Bible is saying Jesus is the one that's holding you together. I want to let you know that you're never going to be lost from the Lord. Jesus is the one that's holding you together. I want to let you know that you're not separated from God. The Bible says that nothing can separate us from the love of the Lord. The Bible says not no height, not no depth, not no demon, not no trial. The Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of God. Who is the one that's holding you above reproach? Even though you might feel that you are cast away, you might feel condemned, you might feel guilty, you might feel like a hypocrite. But who is the one that's holding you above reproach? Jesus Christ. And all this is possible, look what the Bible says, if you hold fast to your faith. If you stay steadfast. I want to let you know. Maybe you did repent and you fell again in that sin. What is the Bible letting you know? Jesus is holding you together. Jesus is the one that's reconciled you back to the Father. Jesus is the one that's going to present you blameless and holy above reproach. All you have to do, this is all you have to do for all those things that we just read. All you have to do is keep trusting the Lord. Keep your faith on Him. The Bible says remain steadfast. In other words, keep moving forward. So repent, you fell again. Keep moving forward. The Bible says Jesus is the one that's presenting you above reproach. He's the one that's going to present you blameless and holy. But I want to read you something else. Look what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It's talking to Christians who might have sin in their life. So you repent it, but you sin again. Jesus is the one that's holding you together. All you have to do is keep going forward. Keep being steadfast. He's the one that's going to present you blameless and holy and above reproach. So you have a sin in your life. You fell in sin. Maybe you're backsliding. What do you have to do? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Look what it says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin, sin, which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So the Bible is talking to Christians and he's telling Christians, hey, every weight that is weighing you down and every sin that is weighing you down, the Bible is not talking to unbelievers. The Bible's not talking to hypocrites. The Bible's talking to people who love Jesus. It's talking to people who were saved by what Jesus did for them on the cross. And the Bible is saying to Christians, you who are being weighed down, you who have sins that are weighing you down and clinging so close to you, cast them off so that you can run the race with endurance. So what happens when you're in sin? What happens when you backslide? Repent. Cast that sin off. And what is God telling you? Keep moving forward. Keep running the race. And look what verse 2 says. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So what do you have to do? Repent of your sins. Cast it off. That sin is trying to weigh you down. That guilt is trying to weigh you down. The Bible is saying that you're in a journey, you're in a race, you're in a marathon, and sin and condemnation and guilt want to weigh you down. Why? To stop you from running. Because the answer, the victory, is when you keep going towards Jesus. And the Bible tells us this, victory. It says, keep running, cast that sin off, cast that weight off, and all you have to do is the same thing that Colossians said. The Bible says, looking to Jesus, looking to Jesus the one who endured the cross. How are you going to give victory? Why are you forgiven? Because you're looking to Jesus. How are you going to have the victory? When you look to Jesus. He is the victory. He is the goal. He is the one that makes you perfect. So what happens when you repent and sin again? What you should do is repent. Cast that sin off. Don't let the devil condemn you with it. And keep moving forward. Because I want to tell you, every step you take is a step that's getting closer to the Lord. And He is the one that's presenting you blameless. He is the one that's going to present you holy. He is the one that's the glue that's keeping you together. He's the one that reconciled you. And He is the one that's going to present you above reproach. The Bible is saying, cast that sin off. Cast that weight off. Set your eyes on Jesus. Don't focus on that sin. Don't focus on that guilt. Cast it off. Don't even look at it. Just repent and throw it off for you. Look to Jesus. He is the one that saved you. He is the one why you're holy, why you're righteous, why you're forgiven. Cast that sin off. Don't even look at that sin. Repent in Jesus' mighty name and keep moving forward. But I want to read you one more scripture. Look what the Bible says. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 25. Because you might say, okay, 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 but I don't always want to live like this. I don't always want to fall in that same sin. You don't have to. And you will not in Jesus' mighty name. You might be right now, but what do you have to do? Repent, cast it off. But you will be made better, and you will grow, and you will mature. And you're not always going to struggle with the same things that you're struggling with right now. Look what the Bible tells us. James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. 
For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror, for he looks at himself, but then goes away and at once forgets what he looks like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseveres. What is persevere? Endures, keeps going, running the race. You don't quit. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseveres. Don't stop. Don't quit. Keep going towards Jesus. Keep looking at Jesus. Being not a hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. So what is the Bible saying? When you move forward, when you're a doer of the word, the Bible says God is going to shape you. He's going to mold you and you will be blessed in all you're doing. In other words, the Bible is telling you this. When you set your eyes on Jesus, when you cast that sin off, when you run the race with endurance, when you persevere, when you put your eyes on Jesus, when you're a person who practices the word of God, the Bible says you will be blessed in all you're doing. What does that mean? God is going to grow you. God is going to mature you. It means you're going to get better in the things of the Lord. It's like a person who doesn't know how to shoot a basketball. The more you shoot and you practice good form and good technique, what's going to happen eventually? You're going to get better at shooting. It's like a person who doesn't know how to dribble the basketball. But what happens when you dribble and you practice? You're going to get better at dribbling. Why doesn't that apply to you? Why can't that apply to you? The Bible says it will apply to you when you look at the perfect law of liberty. When you're a doer of God's word, the Bible says you will be blessed in all you're doing. And who's the one that's going to bless you? God. Why is he going to bless you? Because of you? Because you're so perfect? No. Nah. He's going to bless you because of Jesus Christ. And you keep practicing and you keep moving forward and you keep repenting. Yeah, the sin's going to weigh you down. Yeah, the sin's going to try to hold you back. Nah, cast it off. Don't even look at that. Look to Jesus. And the Bible says you will be blessed in all you're doing. So what is God going to do when a Christian repents but then falls in sin again? God, he's going to raise you back up. He's going to present you blameless. He's going to present you holy. He is going to bless you in all you're doing when you keep going forward. When you keep practicing his word. So who are you going to listen to? God's word that says he's the one presenting you holy and blameless? Or who are you going to listen to? The guilt and the condemnation of the devil that's trying to hold you down? No. Keep moving forward. Trust God. Repent of your sins. Put your eyes on Jesus and you will be blessed in all you're doing. I hope this video blessed your life. If it did, do me a favor. Subscribe if you're not. Press that like button. Leave a comment. Share this video with somebody. And make sure you watch one of these videos before you click off. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. Remember, you're blameless and you're holy and above reproach because of Jesus. Have a blessed day.